We're so thankful, God, for what you've done for us in our lives. God, we're so thankful for our salvation. Father, we're so thankful for that precious blood that was shed on Calvary. We're so thankful, God, for Jesus Christ. He's not dead. He's alive. Father, we're so thankful that He's sitting at the right hand of the Father making the decision for us. God, we're so thankful for that. We're so thankful this morning, God, that He's not coming back as a babe in a manger. But he's coming back as the Lion of the tribe of Judah. He's coming back to rule with a rod of iron. God, we're so thankful, Lord, as we look at this world as it gets dimmer and dimmer, that God, this is not the end. This is only the beginning. God, we're so thankful that you have a plan. We're so thankful for your will, God. We're thankful this morning, God, that you've got it all figured out. Nothing has caught you by surprise. Father, we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory and we give you all the honor for it truly belongs to you. Father, I, I don't have the vocabulary to express what I feel in my heart when I pray, but God, I'm so thankful. We ask you, Father, for our loved ones that are lost. Lord, we pray this morning for the ones that don't know Jesus. God, we pray for the ones that are in danger of hellfire. We pray, God, for the ones that are in danger of slipping into eternity, lost and lost forever. Father, this morning we pray for the ones that if the rapture of the church were to happen at this moment, God, they'd be left behind to face the great tribulation. Father, we pray for them, God, that you'd help them, God, that they understand, God, the totality. Help them understand the gospel and what Christ done for them. Father, we ask you, Lord, to touch the ones that are sick in body. We ask for the ones, God, that has infirmity in their flesh. I pray, God, that you'll touch every need according to your riches and according to your glory. Father, we pray for the ones this morning, God, connected to this body that don't know Jesus especially. Father, we pray for the ones suffering by addiction. Father, it's all around us. Oh, it's so close to home, God. They're hooked, God, and they can't get loose from it. I pray that you'll touch them. I pray, God, that you'll settle the bond of addiction. I plead the precious blood of Jesus over and over and over, God. We ask you, Father, for this ministry. We ask you for this church, God, that it be done according to your will. Pray that it be your church and bring your ministry. We ask you, God, to have your way in everything that's done here. We pray, God, we ask you that we hear those words. Well done, Lord, faithful servant.
that it's almost completed and ready for me to move in. My deed was both signed and recorded the day Jesus he saved me from sin. My name was in Take that with you. 
go get ready, okay? Why? Why are you going? Matthew, I go to church every Sunday. You know this. You was raised in church. Why where do you go? Yeah, I'm glad I'm grown up and I ain't gotta go no more. I was drugged to church. Matthew. You shouldn't act like that. You know better than that. You have to have salvation to get to heaven. No, I don't. Save from what? You have to be saved from your sins. I don't Matthew, sin. let me show you something. You, everybody sins, honey. I don't. Matthew, look right here in Romans. <coughs> okay, Romans 10, it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Hey, Mom, can we wear any Christmas dresses? Yes, yes, you can. Yes. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart, and that and that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Honey, you've got to be saved. And what if the rapture happens? I no, I don't. I don't need to be saved. I'm a good guy. I'm fine. And let me tell you something. If there, if there is a heaven, if there is a God, you know, whatever. I mean, I'm sure there is, but whatever. If if he's such a good God and he don't let me in for you know me being good, I'm good. Then he ain't a good God at all. Good works does not get you into heaven. Yeah, but I'm not a bad guy. Mom, can I? Can you help me find my shoe? I think Mom did it. Tell him I'll be in there in just a minute to find your stuff. I'm not a bad guy. I'm not like so and so down here cheating on his wife. I don't cheat. I ain't like so and so down here stealing, stealing Matthew. everything. I work. That, that's not going to cut it. You have to be saved. You have to, you need to confess your sins. You have to, you, you got to, you can't, no. this is not going to do it. You've got to go to church. You've got to confess your sins. You've got to be saved. No, I don't. Yes. You I, may, but I don't. Yes, we all do. This is not going to get you into heaven. I'm sorry, honey, but I'm going to church with or without you. There is no Christmas present under the Christmas tree that will so. get you into heaven. That's going to make your kids happier. Well, then go. Well, I'm going. I'm sorry. I go love on. you, but this is what you, I'm doing. Yeah, you really love me. <coughs> I it do. It really shows you're running off. <laughs> Ugh. Worst Christmas ever. Go ahead and fall on Christmas Sunday, Sunday morning. Y'all better hurry if you're going to church. You're probably going to miss it. This rapture thing. <clears throat> Y'all better hurry. Daddy, would you please go to oh. church with us? Honey, no. Uh, no. <laughs> I love you, but I, you know I can't. Stinky old church. Stinky old church is boring. Send him on daughter out. Try to. No, there's, there's no way. There's no way. 
Where Let's... are you? Why are y'all not in here? Jessica, if you're in here, come out. It's not funny. No, what do you mean? We didn't miss. Did we miss it? Jesus. What do you mean, miss? We missed Jesus coming back. No, Jesus yes. wouldn't do this to me. Yes. If, Jesus was, if Jesus was real, he would have showed himself to me. He would. Everybody's gone. Everybody's Where's gone. Where's your family? They're gone. They're late church. It. They're no. Late church. No. no, they're gone. Let me call the uh, Let's see. Hey. Hey, listen, I know your family goes to church. What? Uh, okay. Your family, you don't know where your family is. Okay. Uh, okay, don't know, where, don't know where my family is either. Okay. Well, all right. Whatever. Uh, let's see. Okay. You're, I believe, you're, you're right, you're right. Um, I, I know what to do. I know what to do. I know exactly what to do. She tried to read me this. She tried to tell me this. But all the time. The no, there, no, no. If God's a good God, then He would. He'll, He'll, He'll give us a way. He's not just going to leave us down here. He's going to give us a way. Oh, uh, where is it at? She have a bookmark here. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. God, I, I, I confess. I confess Jesus. Jesus is Lord. Please save me. Please save me. God, please save me. You know, please save me, God. Please save me, Jesus. I don't know. Last night as I lay sleeping, a dream came to me. I dreamed about the end of time, about eternity. I saw a million sinners fall on their face to pray. The Lord just sadly looked at them and this I Oh, my wife and children, I 
When you believe this word of God and you know in your heart and you know in your soul that what you're reading is right whenever you've been born again by the Spirit of God a simple play like that can bring it to life in the depths of your soul and you know that this is going to be a reality one morning it's going to be a reality for one day it's going to be reality. It's reserved. Amen. It's rolled in the Word of God that this is going to be a reality in so many people's lives. And I want to read it to you out of the Word of God this morning. He says, For the Lord Himself, that means He's not going to be sending nobody. The Lord sent a lot of people to do a lot of things throughout Scripture. He sent a lot of angels. He sent a lot of people. He sent a lot of men, a lot of prophets. But this time you find the Word of God says, For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Here's the great catching away. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Then he says this, Wherefore comfort one another with these words. We find that the Word of God tells us that God's not slack, as men count slackness, but He's not willing, but He's long-suffering, He's not willing that any should perish. We find that the Word of God says in the book of Peter that there'd be scoffers that come in the last days walking according to their own lust, saying, where is the promise of His coming? But we find the Word of God says that there's coming a time that He will not tarry. There's coming a time that He's going to come. We understand and we believe in the Word of God that Jesus, the Word of God prophesied the birth of Jesus Christ. Do you believe that? I believe with all of my heart this book prophesied the birth of Jesus Christ. Guess what? That happened 2,000 years ago. You can go back and study any kind of history and find that that's true even outside of the Bible. You'll find that in Jewish history. If you believe with all your heart today that Jesus came, that the Word of God prophesied that, and you believe that with all your heart that He came, then you must also believe that He's going to return because the same Word of God that said that He was going to be born, the same Word of God tells me that He's going to return, and it also tells me that He's coming in an hour that you think not. That tells me that He's coming when the world's not looking for Him. That tells me that He's coming as a thief in the night. what the Word of God says. In a moment that you think not, amen, He's going to appear. The question this morning is, is are you ready? I said the question this morning is, is are you ready? We play with a lot of things. There's a lot of things in this world that's superficial. There's a lot of lies that's being told left and right. And people run things, then they run off of emotions and run off of this, and it runs left, and it runs right. But the, but the truth of the matter is this morning, the only thing that's going to matter is do you know Jesus Christ whenever the trump of God sounds, whenever that great flash of lightning takes place, whenever God, I believe with all of my heart according to Scripture, that uh, uh, nobody knows the day and the hour but God. God's the only one that knows. Jesus don't even know. But there's coming a time whenever God is going to turn to Jesus. Jesus and says go get your church I believe that this morning Jesus' hand is on the door. I believe that if you listen very carefully, you can hear the ruffle in the clouds, the Messiah's coming. You can hear the footsteps of the Master about to step out on the clouds. Amen. I believe that it could happen any moment, that God could turn and say, Gabriel, blow the trumpet, amen, and bring the children home. And God's going to gather those that belong to Him is going to come to Him. The question this morning is, is do you belong to Him? You can fool a lot of things. 
I, I, I was watching a movie here just the other day, and I'm about done here, but I was watching a movie here just the other day about uh, Christ's life, and uh, Jesus at that time was calling his disciples, and he was explaining to them some things that was going to happen, and I love what he told one of them. He said, uh, you just gather them, he said, because I'm going to sort them out later. He told him, he said, you, you gather them, that's your job is to gather them. He said, I'm going to do the sorting out, I'm going to sort them out later. You see, you, you, you may fool your pastor, you may fool your wife, you might fool your spouse. See, you, you may fool a lot of people with a lot of things, but whenever the trump of God sounds, you're not going to fool God. Amen? I said, you're not going to fool God. Whenever you die and stand before God on the day of judgment, you're not going to be fooling anybody. And your only remedy this morning is that you must be born again by the Spirit of God. I wondered many times as I've studied about the rapture and what the scripture has to say about it. And I've wondered what it would be like the day after, the moment after, the few moments after the rapture has taken place. We get the word from the Greek word harpatsu, which means snatching away. And I've wondered what it would be like. I, I, I suspect that there'd be a lot of preachers in their congregations meeting right after the rapture when they see something has taken place. I would imagine a lot of people would be asking the question, you know, we were, we, we, we were wrong. We, we, we've, just, we've missed it. We didn't really know him. And I'll tell you as I close what burns in my heart today more than anything is that since I've been a preacher of the gospel, my, I understand most of the world out there is going to hell. I understand that. I do. But I want to tell you what troubles my soul. I want to tell you what keeps me going. I want to tell you what gets me to preach this gospel like I do and makes me want to keep preaching it is the thought that there are people sitting on the pews in the house of God now, even maybe this morning, that are not ready, that are professing, but maybe they're not ready. And, and the rapture is going to be the tell-all if that happens. Or whenever you die, it's going to be the tell-all. You're not going to be fooling God. And the deception is running rampant like nobody's business. And it's even running rampant in the churches. We now have people sitting on the pews that absolutely possess no fruit of Jesus living on the inside of them, which tells me according to scripture that if what we just played for you this morning right here were to take place, I wonder how many millions of people would be left behind. Do you understand that how many people are gonna open their eyes and say, oh my God, what they told me about this rapture was right. Now what they told me, now I wonder if all of that great tribulation, I wonder if that was gonna be right too because that's what they're gonna be faced with. Seven years of a great tribulation. Steven Spielberg cannot even begin to reproduce anything of its likeness in the scripture. You find that whenever the rapture takes place, the first thing that will come to power is the Antichrist will come to power. We read in the word of God where in the three and a half years they cause, they start building the temple back. It's going to take them about three and a half years to build that. You read in the word of God where it says in three and a half years he'll cause the sacrifice to cease. That's when you'll see the abomination of desolation. He'll go and set himself down in the temple of God and claim to be God and claim to be worshipped. The word of God said that whenever they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as the birth pains of a woman. There's going to be a man that after this rapture, the rapture, the rapture happens, there's going to be a man that come to power and stand up and have the answers for everything. The word of God says that he'll have the ability to cause a statue to speak. He'll have lying signs and wonders uh, you'll find in that time. But yet he's going to lead them right into destruction. And you're going to find that when that sacrifice begins to cease in that temple, when he causes the sacrifice to cease, as the book of Daniel prophesied, you're going to find God's judgment hitting this earth in machine gun fashion. You've not seen anything to the likeness of it until you've read through those bowls, the vials, the trumpets, whenever God releases his wrath on an ungodly world. I read one place, I'm a fisherman, one that gets out, stands out to me more than anything. I read where it says that every living creature in the sea is going to die. Do you understand what that's going to be like here on planet Earth when all the living creatures in the sea die? I remember going around Poor Farm Lake over in Wahala when I was a child and somebody had caught a catfish or a carp. I can't remember what it was. and throwed it on the bank. And as a child, I couldn't even stand to walk by that rotten carcass as it laid on the bank. Can you imagine when every living creature in the sea and every living creature in the waters die and they're floating on top of the water and they're rotten. Do you understand the diseases that's going to come forth just out of that alone? And that is just a small figment of what's really going to take place during the Great Tribulation. That's what you'll be left for.
That's what you'll be facing. I want to submit something to you this morning as your pastor with all of my heart. I want to submit this to you. If you won't serve God now, what in God's name makes you think you're going to serve Him at the expense of losing your head? What right do you have to say I'd lose my head for Him when I wouldn't even go to church for Him on a Sunday morning? I submit to you, you need to be saved. What we saw here this morning was a reality and it burns in my heart just like reading the Word of God. I'll read it to you one more time. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. For the believer, that's hope. For the believer, that's an awesome thing. Amen. What about you this morning? Do you know Him? My wife is going to play and we're going to pray. This altar is open if you want to come down and pray this morning. Those of you that have lost loved ones, I would encourage you to be praying for them this morning. Those of you that don't know or that you're right, don't know, I'd encourage you to go find Him. The Word of God said, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. I'd encourage you to get about the Father's business. And I wouldn't let heaven alone until I knew that when that trumpet of God sounded, that I was going to heaven. I'd make it my business if I was lost this morning. I'd make it my business to get up and go after Jesus until I found Him. You children, listen to me. Something's putting on your heart. Maybe Jesus. You'd be expecting the Holy Ghost of God to deal with your little hearts. And when He deals with it, you run to Him. You yield to Him with all of your hearts. You give Him everything that you've got. If Jesus will never hurt you. He'll do you good and help you too. He'll carry you all the way to heaven if you'll trust Him with all of your heart. If you feel God put it on the strings of your heart, just yield to Him and give Him your heart with every ounce of your being. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray this morning, God. We ask You, Father, that You'll touch everybody that's here. I pray and I ask You, Lord Jesus, God, that we'd be ready, Lord, Lord, there's no one that can make this situation more real than the Holy Ghost of God. Father, I'm asking you, Lord, that He'd touch our hearts. I'm asking you, God, that you help us, God, to be a people that's ready to go, to be a people that's ready, God, to be in your presence, to be a people that's ready whenever the trump of God sounds. Whenever the great shout takes place, God, I pray, God, that we'd be ready, Lord looking up, prayed up, packed up, ready to go up in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for every soul in this building this morning. And I ask you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you'll touch the hearts. I pray, God, that you do the convicting, Lord. I pray that you do the drawing, God. We understand no man comes if the Holy Ghost drawing. I'm asking you, Father, that you will draw forth. I'm asking you in the name of Jesus.
give us souls for our labor, God.